Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're having a great day. Frozen Nexus here, and today I'm going to be talking about something that I've been seeing a lot of people complain about, and I agree with them, to some extent. Uh, it's basically the question, did the new patch 2.1.12, I hope I did that right. No, wait, no, it should just be... Fucking A, I don't know. The newest patch. I Did the newest patch kill the game? Well, I guess, you know, there's no real fine answer to that. I think it made the game worse, I will admit that. I made another video about that, how they made the repair system worse while trying to make it better, which was really unfortunate, but that's not what this video is about. I already made that video. This is more about, did it kill the game? How is the player base responding, and things like that. Well, there's no way for me to really calculate how many people are on at any given time. To my knowledge, you know, it doesn't seem too different. The search times for raids went up a little bit, but you could attribute that to a plethora of things, you know? All the way from people just getting bored with the game, to the patch not working, to not doing raids, blah blah blah. There's no way to just use these numbers as finite evidence of anything, really. Uh, so, I guess you could say less people are playing it, but you can't really correlate those two things unless you can actually look at the statistics more in depth like the devs can. Uh, I don't have access to those statistics, obviously. But it's not really going to kill the game because you don't really kill a closed beta. A closed beta isn't here to wow people. It isn't here to blow your standards out of the water. It's not here as a publicity stunt. It's here to figure out what needs improved, what doesn't need improved, and how to market the game and what the community wants. There's very little forethought that goes into a uh, closed beta. You don't think, eh, I think we're going to make this a perfect game. No, it's, it's just here to figure out what works and what doesn't. There are hardly a fraction of the players playing the game now that will be when the game hits open beta, because, I mean, a lot of people want to play this game, whether or not this game is good, and I'm using quote air quotes when saying that, is really a hard thing to determine, and most people would rather just play a free open beta rather than listening to a stranger's view on the internet about whether or not a game is potentially good. I know for one, I like to make my own judgments about a game rather than just listening to some guy, you know, tell me if the game is good or not. That's why in my reviews I try and stay impartial, talk about what would make the game good to different types of people, like who would like the game more than others, and you know, generally like I said, besiege people or from the depths people, they, this is probably a game that they would really enjoy because it's a, it's a much better done version of that, I wouldn't say better done, but it's a differently done version of that in such a way that I think everyone would want to try it if you enjoyed those games. So. I don't think you can say you really killed a closed beta because, well, a lot of people may quit the game and never come back, which is unfortunate, you know, that's going to hurt the player base, but in the long run, this closed beta is going to help uh, the devs receive information based on what they should and shouldn't do on the future and what needs fixed and doesn't before the open beta releases. Therefore, the full game will be much better than the current product you're looking at right now, or the open beta at least will be a marginal bit better. So you can't really just say, uh, the game's dead because they ruined it with this one patch. It just simply isn't how that works. Once this game hits open beta, they're going to have an entirely different community than the one that already exists. Like right now, when I post a video to the r slash crossout subreddit, I'm on the top page of the subreddit for about a day or two because my fans are fucking awesome. I have like 430 subscribers, less than that at the moment, and seriously, the people who watch my videos are very, like, avid that they like me, you know, these, you guys are fucking awesome, like, you really helped me get a lot of views by, uh, keeping me on top of the r slash cross out page, and you really just, all the support that I get from you guys is really fucking awesome, I, I, I love you guys, but, Besides, you know, gloating about how uh, awesome my fan base is, I really need to get back into the topic. The whole sense of the community is going to change. What I meant by, you know, my whole, like, oh, I'm on top of r slash cross out, I wasn't really gloating there. What I'm saying is, once this game hits open beta, 
and real YouTubers, and I shouldn't say real YouTubers because I'm a real YouTuber too, but once bigger YouTubers get into it, they're going to care more about them than me. I mean, people like Devil Dog Gamer, Fly Daily, and then have been playing it right now, but I'm talking about the big guys, like when the Rad Brad or whatever, any of those like big guys really get into here, you know, their stuff is going to be on top of the front page because, you know, they have a huge fan base that comes with them, stuff that I can't support, and that means a lot of people are going to try out this game just because their favorite YouTuber, you know, promoted it. While this guy with the rammer really screwed me over there. But anyway, uh, let's, get back, let's get back to killing this guy. But anyway, like I was saying, these bigger YouTubers are going to bring these huge fan bases over to the game. And it's going to completely shift the community. Maybe good, maybe bad. Let's hope PewDiePie doesn't play it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying about, you know, toxic communities. I mean, maybe Leafy's here. Everyone be a cyber bully. I'm just fucking kidding. I don't actually give a shit about the whole Leafy thing. That's so stupid. But anyway, it, I don't think the game is dead. I don't think it's safe to throw in the towel or say the devs are done, blah, blah, blah. Because they're not. They haven't even added microtransactions. They don't even have a profit margin. They don't know what their net revenue will be. None of this. It's very important that the game hits open beta first. Now, if in open beta, they really fuck up the game like they did now, that might be a situation in which you can say they kind of, you know, they might have fucked themselves, you know, screwed the pooch on that one, because, well, if you really, if you piss off a few hundred people, maybe a few, uh, few thousand people, it's not too bad for your game, it's controllable, you can fix the product, make it look like you care, which I think the devs do care in the first place, but you can make it look like you care and, you know, use it as a marketing scheme to get more people. But if you piss off a hundred thousand people, well then you have a situation kind of like The Division, where anyone who really ever gave a shit about the game stopped playing, and the people who kind of still are there are just there to continue to complain about it. It's really why I've just kind of moved away from The Division. I kept hoping it would get better, just praying that, you know, maybe one day, Maybe it'll get better, but no, it never got better. It got slowly and progressively worse. They broke more and more things with each patch. And as far as I can tell, these devs, Tarjem, will not be doing that. You know, they haven't really broken anything in the game except for mechanics. Like, what I mean by that is they don't really have a great repair system. But again, that's another video. I'm not going to rant about the repair system in this video. What I do mean by breaking the game is causing game-breaking glitches, where if you put said gun on said cabin at a certain angle, then every time your vehicle spawns in, you're invisible or shit like that. Kind of like in The Division, where they had an issue with the backpack, where if you had a high-end backpack, then there's a small probability under a certain set of circumstances that your account would just get locked because it thinks that you have too many items. And it took them months to fix this. People just kept getting locked out of their account and not able to play a $60 game. You'd think this would be number one priority to fix, but they did tons of other things first. And that just leads to bad marketing. Because, well, if you're adding features to the game while you still have a few people who can't even play the game, then you just look like a bunch of money-hungry assholes. And I don't know what more I really expected from Ubisoft. These are the people that added microtransactions to Assassin's Creed. So, yeah, I don't have high hopes for that company. Moving on, though. The game is still in a state where it can be improved. Sure, they screwed up the repair system. It sucks right now, but they can revert it. They can go back to what it was. I personally think if they just combine the old repair system with the new repair system, where you can still, you know, use three broken parts to make a new one, durability transfer and everything, and spare parts are still a thing, then I think we wouldn't have as big of an issue here. But currently, they have not re-added those features. Hopefully, they will in the future, because again, like I said, the game is still in a repairable state. It's not screwed. Sorry about that quick cut there, I kind of went into a coughing fit. But like I was saying, the game is still very much in a state that it can be fixed, and not only fixed, improved. And that's what's really important with a game that's in closed beta, making sure that it continues to improve throughout the span of its development cycle. If you just take a game and you release the closed beta and you just assume, eh, when we get this 
portion of the game fixed, it's good enough to release, then you have a shitty game. What these devs are actually doing is they're systematically adding in more and more features to make the game better and better, rather than just, you know, okay, well, we're not going to add any new features, guns, or weapons. We'll just add all that stuff once the game is released. We're just going to get what we have perfect and then release it to make the most amount of money. So, they're not really money hungry in that sense. I, They're actually trying to make a decent product before the game has its full release or hits its full release, however you want to put it. They do care that they want to make their game actually something people enjoy. They're more interested about perfecting it than they are pleasing the small community they have right now. Whether or not that pisses you off is up to you, but if you want the game to be perfect, it has to go through trial and error. And generally, if you've done anything in life that's a difficult task, you've learned there's a lot more error than there is trial, and you learn from your mistakes. And I'm sure the devs will learn from their mistakes too. I mean, look at RuneScape for example. They lost over 60% of their player base in one fucking update. You really know you fucked yourselves when 60% of your player base just quits after one update. And guess what? The way they fixed that is, they've now implemented a policy where they will never implement an update unless it has at least 75% approval or 70% approval. Don't know the exact figure there, but regardless, it is an excellent system that really helped promote the game, and now 2007 Scape is probably the best it's ever been, you know? It's so much fun, it's entertaining, and everything they add to the game is a great addition because the community votes on it. Now, I'm not saying the devs are going to turn around and add a community vote feature like RuneScape did. I'm saying that it's possible that they might add something similar, or they'll just figure out on their own how to make the game better, rather than, you know, doing things that piss off the community. Because they don't know these things yet. They don't understand. They don't really... I'm not trying to patronize or patronize or whatever, patronize them, but the game is still in a very early stage that needs to be developed, and the devs are trying to develop it. That's, you know, the biggest thing that they're doing right now, and this whole development process is what will make the game better. If we keep staking with them, providing decent feedback, and helping them succeed on improving the game mechanics and things like that, we will surely see the game improve over time, and you'll no longer have to complain about issues about the repair mechanic. But just saying, oh, the game's dead, we're, we're done, you know, that's not going to solve anything. Quitting the game is just accepting the game sucks and you're never going to get to play it. I don't know about you guys, but this is one of the most unique games I've ever played. You know, I'm not exactly an old person, so I don't know if that holds any weight to, you know, classic games or any shit like that, but to me, I want to see what this game is going to be like in the long run, and I'm sure a lot of other people do too. And you can't do that if the game just, you know, never makes it out of closed beta because the community just gave up on it. Like I said, the repair issue, I agree, it's terrible, you know? They're, they need to fix that shit because it's awful. Just flat out terrible. And it needs to be fixed, but it's, like I said, the game is still in a fixable state. It's not like we're stuck with this repair mechanic forever. We're never gonna change it. It's impossible, can't be done. Sorry, call Jesus, maybe he'll be able to do it. It's not like that kind of situation, you know? They didn't fuck us forever, but just temporarily. So, you know, getting fucked every once in a while, just build some character. So get over it, guys. I mean... I'm sure it's really pissy for you piss some people off just to say get over it guys especially when I made a video complaining about the same topic but I'm more or less pointing out facts and things like that it's okay to complain you know complaining is feedback if you don't complain then they're never going to know what they did was wrong and so it's very important that people complain so keep doing it but don't just be like I'm never playing this game again and then continue to trash the game all over every social media you have and encourage people to never play the game because the devs are assholes. That's, you're just being counterproductive. You're being less productive than the US Congress right now. I mean, shit, like, that's just probably the least productive thing anyone could do for anything. I don't, if you want a game to get better, well, 
how is just saying fuck it, never play it going to do that? Especially when the devs have more than proven their uh, aptitude to be able to work on the game and fix problems and add new content that is interesting. I mean, look at this base game to begin with. This game is a lot of fun. It is incredibly fun to play. It's very unique. It has great mechanics in it. And some mechanics are broken, like I said, the repair system. But overall, the game is a lot of fun to play, and I will continue to play it. So when it does get better, eventually, it will be an even more interesting, fun experience. And I'll be able to go back and look through all my videos and see how far the game has come. But... Like I said, I'm not just going to throw this game on the ground and never play it. If the devs do a full-on Ubisoft and pretty much continue to fuck up the game patch after patch, yeah, I will throw it down. But right now, I don't care. You know, it's one bad patch, I'm upset about it, I don't like it, and, well, I'll get over it. I'm just one guy with one opinion, it doesn't fucking matter. I know a lot of people share this opinion, but if you just keep playing the game, keep giving feedback, and they'll get the data collected from the whole spare parts issue, they'll be able to fix it. But if you just say, ah, fuck this game, well, it won't get fixed. And, I mean, sure, if you're just a few people quit, I'm sure not a shit ton of people are quitting to actually make a ginormous difference, but it's just the overall idea that people are continuing to go out and, you know, trash the game on social media than on Reddit and other websites and YouTube comments to try and encourage other people not to buy the game. That's the kind of behavior that really fucks over a game. And I've even seen it go as far as people who don't even own the game telling other people not to buy the game. I don't understand how you're in any position at all to be making that judgment. If you're one of those people, you're a fucking idiot. So, you know, if you are one of those people, click unsubscribe, hit the un uh, dislike button, and just move the fuck on because I think you're a complete goddamn moron. I'm, I do this for fun. I'm not going to just appeal to every audience. If you're someone who doesn't buy a game and goes around trashing a closed beta, it's one thing to not own a game and trash it, but it's another thing to trash a game that says it's still in closed beta, it's only been in closed beta less than two months, you don't even own it, and you've just formed your opinion from what other people told you. That you're, what the f that's not how opinions work, you don't have an opinion on the game. People like me like the game, other people don't. So how can you determine whether the game is good or bad? Does someone else have a better opinion than me? If so, how do I get a better opinion? Where do I apply? Do I have to go to the better opinion store? Is this a thing? Is this how our country is run? I don't think so, but, you know, considering Hillary Clinton is the top Democratic candidate right now, I wouldn't be surprised if you could just buy better opinions or having a larger subscriber base gives you better opinions by default. Which, I'm sure it does, you know, now that I think about it. Because, who the hell, if PewDiePie says this game sucks, never buy it, who the hell's gonna listen to me over him because, you know, fucking PewDiePie. But, anyway, I just hope, you know, people understand that, yeah, this patch sucked. It was terrible. You know, it, the Apocalypse patch, I've seen it called on Reddit, is definitely a fair name for it. So, you know, that's, yeah, the, okay, yeah, I get it, you know hate on the patch but don't just say the game's terrible never play the game one patch was bad that means the entire game is going to be awful therefore we can never play it i what the, the two plus two start equaling fish since the last time i checked i'm confused like where are these people getting this shit from like it's so stupid to just hate a game because of one patch and it's it's different to hate a game because of one patch when it's full release but when a game is a self-declared closed beta, how can you judge the closed beta that's only been out for two months for one bad patch? All the other patches have been great so far, you know? When they added new weapons to the game, that was awesome. When they changed around the structure, which was in the very early big parts of the game, I don't know, not a lot of people noticed that they actually changed around the structure of the vehicles. To make some vehicles more powerful than they were before, which was a really great thing they should have done long before, and it really was a great patch. You know, that just shows one of the times that Ubisoft, not Ubisoft, Targem, that did a great patch or made a great patch. And there have been a lot of things added, bug fixes and graphical glitches, and things that have just made the game better in general, but have gone undeservedly noted because, you know, 
no one ever really pays attention to the miscellaneous bug fixes. They just want their stuff to be better and they want it to never break, blah blah blah. So, you know, just keep giving feedback to the devs. If you hate the patch, well, that's one thing, like I said, but hating the game because of one patch, I mean, you bought into a closed beta test. You knew what you were getting into. At no point did they say, this is a fully complete game, you can, you should be able to earn your refund if you don't like it, blah blah blah. If you try to refund for a test, you're a moron. So, you know, that's all I'm just gonna leave it at. Just, you can't really get pissed off at a game in a closed beta test because, well, you, while you can be angry about the patch and yell at the devs to fix it, and if they don't fix it, that's one thing, but when you buy into a closed beta, you knew what you were buying into. You knew you weren't buying a fully finished game, so it's shit's on you if you don't like it. You know, it's your own issue, but anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, whoever I offended in this video, I don't care because, you know, you, you know it's not... I only, if, I never really offended anyone that has a reasonable opinion, you know. Hating the patch is one thing, but saying the game is terrible and then going around saying never buy the game, blah blah blah, that's just ignorant. So, yeah, peace out guys, and uh, hope to see you in the next one.